Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Welcome to another segment of 10 Minutes with the Tech. And uh, basically what we're doing here is I'm collating and we've got a team behind me that's gathering all these questions that have come in and I'm spending 10 minutes answering as many as I can. And so if you like this, just keep looking for the series in our playlist and you can just keep watching these things all the way through. So Todd's got a question. I did a video on a um, refrigerator and it turned out to be a dinosaur board. That was the one where I walked through how to figure out the board with the serial number and check the jumpers and all this kind of stuff. He had a very good question, something that would I would I would have liked to have done, I would have liked to have added. And um, it's it's kind of a wordy question, but basically at the end of the day, uh, if, if you're familiar with that video, it's called Norco 1200 NOCO error caused by failed control board. Um, so uh, Todd, you're welcome for the video. Thank you. We're, he's thanking us. I'm thanking him for watching and thanking him for his comment. He's an electrician and he is handy and he's learning a lot from us on these refrigerator videos. And we've got some really exciting refrigerator videos coming out. I've got some cooling units that I've collected over. We've done, gosh, 12 R, um, cooling unit R&Rs lately. And most of the time I send the cooling units back to the factory, but uh, they're really full of all these cooling units. So I've got a couple of them and we're gonna slice and dice those. So um, uh, be looking for that video coming up. But, but uh, Todd's question is, when I did that repair, one thing I did not do, now let's think about that video. That video basically, when the customer was turning on his refrigerator, right away he got a no-co error. The refrigerator didn't even, didn't even try to start. It just instantly no cooling. Um, so what that tells me right away is uh, normally on the no-co, you would see that no-co show up after about 10 minutes. Okay, the refrigerator is going to try uh, to start. Okay, so Todd, what I saw that, I knew that there was an issue with that control board because NOCO rarely will come right out of the gate charging like it did. Um, normally, refrigerator tries to start. It's running, it's running, it's running. It's not seeing anything changing on that thermistor. And all of a sudden he says, okay, I'm not cooling because my temperature's not going down. And I'm like the little train that could trying and trying and trying. And it's just not happening. So I'm going to throw a no-co error and I'm going to let you know. I'm going to be obnoxious about it. So this one was going right away. So there, it would have been wonderful if I was there to have also done a check on that thermistor with the, with the ice. But on this one, as bad as that board was, and this refrigerator was hot on the inside. I mean, it was ambient on the inside. So there was, I didn't do that test. Uh, every refrigerator we ever do, we always follow up with a customer about two days later to make sure that it's working because we want to back up our work on that. And uh, the customer was very happy on that. So that is a good check to check the thermistor. It's an easy thing to do. Check our refrigerator playlist and you take your thermistor, put it in a block of ice. Those thermistors are negative temperature coefficient thermistors. And wow, what does that mean? Thermistor is a resistor that changes temperature based off of, uh, changes resistance based off of temperature. So you have the negative coefficient and you have the positive coefficient. Um, why are you getting into this, Darren? Well, the thing with those thermistors is as they get warmer, the resistance goes down, okay? Compared to a positive coefficient, um, PTC type thermistor, you see those in electronics a lot of times because as the resistance goes up, as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes up, and that's sometimes where they turn themselves off. Your phone might turn off because it got too hot it's because it was, it's, the resistance went up, and when, it, when the resistance gets to a point, it turns off. So that's why I'm saying that on these refrigerators, these uh, thermocouples, um, uh, I'm sorry, it's a thermistor, not a thermocouple. We'll get into those another time. But that uh, thermistor, as the temperature goes down, the resistance goes up. It's opposite. Okay, so just know that. There on the, that, and that's why, more than you ever wanted to know. Um, also on that control board, it was pretty nasty. Um, there was some corrosion on it. So anyway, Todd, thanks for the question, but that is an excellent check to do, but that's why I didn't do it on that particular job. Okay, uh, Chip has a question. I got five minutes left. Chip has a question. Uh, RV power leads to converter diagnosis. Um, um, okay, so I did a converter job. And um, he's got a question, would this not also be a good time to install an EMS, an, emergency, an energy management system is the EMS. And, um, and he goes on with a story on um, what happened to him one time because of dirty power at the, at the RV park he was plugged into. And uh, man, I, I, it's like driving without a seatbelt is, is not having some kind of a, an, an EMS system. They have, these are those things where you plug into the pedestal and then and sometimes right at the pedestal, there's these boxes. Progressive Dynamics makes one, ShoreGuard makes one. Um, they're either portable that way where you plug it in or you can hardwire one into your coach. That would be an EMS. And then some of your higher end class A's have them integrated into the, the panel where they can detect if it's 30 amp, 50 amp, and all this kind of stuff. So um, yes, 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 definitely. I'm a huge fan of the EMSs. Um, so 
what does that do? It's going to check your brownouts, your surges. Um, having said that, when we were camping in Texas one time, we we're in the middle of a lightning storm and lightning was striking all around us. Not only did it wipe out the EMS, the first strike wiped out the EMS. The second strike <laughs> went through the EMS and wiped out all of our electronics. So it protected us on the first hit, didn't protect us. I don't know if anything would have protected us on these lightning storms. Very exciting times, but um, we did have to buy some new stuff. So yes, I would definitely recommend the uh, energy management system. Um, you know, um, pick, pick your manufacturer of choice and um, go with that. So there is that question. So let's see here. Oh boy, there's a long worded one here. Let me see if I can... Uh, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause for a second, read this, and try to pair it, because this thing is like a paragraph long. So Augie has a question that was the one I, I just read it. It's pretty long. Basically, uh, the gist of the whole question was um, he was camping, and then um, he noticed that uh, things in his RV weren't working right, and then he noticed that uh, things were burned up. Um, basically, Augie, what happened was your somehow your RV got hit with 240 volts. Um your your RV, maybe you plugged it into 240, because if you plug your RV into 240 volts, or if your RV gets hit with 240 volts, your converter's going to go, your microwave's going to go, any any appliance that's on, like a TV or something, they're going to take a hit. Uh, your water heater element might, might, might not, but might. Um, uh, um, and I've done so many of these jobs because people put a welding plug uh, or they change the welding plug over in their barn and they plug their RV into it. And next thing you know, they're making a phone call to their friendly mobile RV service guy to figure out what the heck went wrong. So all you, what happened to you is your RV got hit with a 240 volts. And I am sorry that that happened. Uh, there was one time I did that at a campground. Um, the campground, it wasn't the campground's fault. The utility from the road, that transformer went high and wiped out about 15 RVs in the park. And that was that we got a call on a, a late Saturday night. We worked all night Saturday, all day Sunday. We wiped out our entire inventory of converters and we did everything we could to help these folks out. And uh, then we had to go back again after we got more parts. But uh, the the campers were going to sue the park and and you know i don't know how that works i'm not an attorney but uh the campground ended up uh working out a deal with the utility to help these folks offset their price so if you do go to a campground and you're hit with 100 240 volts and it turns out to be the campground's fault hey look into maybe seeing if they can fix that uh help you out or something i'm not an attorney don't say well darren said this but um you know if i was doing everything right but like we talked about that energy management system, it detects for things like that. So don't assume that their power is clean. Always assume that it's not and um, use an EMS. And, and so, Augie, if you had an energy management system on your pedestal or in your RV, that may have detected that and stopped that. Um, and then it looks like... Um, uh, uh, okay, Augie went on to say here that when he got home... It looks like we're going to finish up with this question. Um, when he got home, he was going to replace the cooling unit. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, heating element inside of his refrigerator, and it's welded to the uh, the socket in his refrigerator. So visualize this with me. You've got your your heating element for your refrigerator, and it's like this J looking like a candy cane thing that's stuck inside of the sleeve, and it it's not budging. And it sounds like from reading this thing that he's been heating that with some penetrating oil and all this kind of stuff, and it's not moving. If that did melt, the thing might have welded itself. And if your refrigerator's fine uh, uh, physically and everything, then really the only thing you could do to get that heating element out is to pull out your whole refrigerator, lay it down, take off your burner, gain access to the bottom of that heating element, and just drill that thing out, put a new heating element in. And if you do put a new heating element in, make sure you know your model number and your serial number and go with the exact right kind of heating element. So that's all the time we have for this segment. Um, so Augie, I hope I have helped you with that and, and the other questions. So guys, if this was helpful, give us a thumb up. Let us know that you appreciate these things. Subscribe to our channel, share it with some friends and a happy camper see my RV work. So if this was helpful, we thank you for watching. Consider joining us on Patreon. Five bucks a month really helps us to take care of all these folks that are behind me not physically behind me right now, but uh, making these things available for you. So um, take care till the next video.